This is my backpack and this has been my companion during my career. I've been having it for at least seven years. It sits nicely even if you fill it with soil samples or a gigantic amount of paper questionnaires. It's still comfortable to carry around. I work for the International Food Policy Research Institute. We briefly call it IFPRI. In IFPRI we have country strategy support projects, as we call it. And I have always been working in such country projects. So when I was first hired, I worked in the Ghana strategy support project. And in these projects, we do research as one pillar. Then we also have capacity building as one pillar. And then we have communication and outreach. We still consider this as a public institution. Um, it is more in the non-profit sector, but the difference with universities is that we do not have teaching responsibilities. We do have a capacity building mandate in many of our projects, of course, but then we are trying to build local capacity of governments or local research uh, institutes. But we are a little bit of a, um, maybe sort of a, a hybrid or Outlier, we often compete with universities for research grants, for example. For my peers, this seemed to be a very good opportunity. I think everybody agreed or, or would, would have said, wow, okay, in terms of my peers and people who are in my field. But when I told my mom that I was going to Ghana for a, a job with the International Food Policy Research Institute, she was very sad. And then when I told my brother, he asked, was there nothing better for you? So he considered moving to a, a country abroad, especially in Africa, probably like a downgrade. They had still expected that a job at the university is more prestigious, while actually in our field, at least to my feeling, the job that I got was a wonderful, highly respected good job. When I conducted my PhD research, I felt a little bit troubled by the fact that we would quickly go to another country, we would collect a little bit of data and then we would run back and then we would sit here in our comfortable offices in a totally different environment and write up some conclusions and, and fancy papers. And I had told myself that if I continued in this field, I should actually be based in the field. And it would allow me to get a better sense of actually how their society is working as a whole. But then, of course, at the, towards the end of my PhD, I realized now I have to practice what I preached. And I have to search for a job where I can be based closer to my research area geographically. And so I started to look around for jobs. And in our field, the CJIAR, that's the Consultative Group for International Agricultural Research, was really where I was looking for jobs. I really liked doing research, but at the same time, I wanted to be based in the field as much as possible and so one of the most obvious employers for that were all the research institutes in the group of the CJIAR. I received quite a lot of offers actually from other centers too, but I was mostly interested in trying my luck with IFPRI because IFPRI really bundles the socio-economic research and the agricultural economics research. For, for some of the centers, it took a long time to get back to me. And to be honest, I applied for two jobs with IFPRI. And for one of the jobs, I was turned down. I also had another job offer in Bangladesh. So for a long period, nothing really seemed to be moving or the options that were there were somewhat suboptimal. But then all of a sudden it was like, wow, <laughs> what's going on? And then I think, that was early September and then in November I went two weeks to Washington for orientation and then flew to Ghana and that was it, you know, the job started in Ghana. So this is typical for our sector, two things happen at relatively short notice. 
but actually with big impact on your private life too. You know, you have a little bit of notice to move around the globe, whether you are alone or you have a family, you know, you just try to manage, you try to get your vaccinations and passport visa and off you go. But that is also in a way what is, I think, incredible and fascinating. I have been really lucky over the course of my life because this was not a career path or a profession that I thought was realistic or that I even knew about. This is kind of how my career path always has been, kind of not with a particular vision or not with a straight career path, but somehow it has brought me to where I am actually very happy. My advice for PhD students looking for jobs now is not to panic, not to be too nervous and kind of go with the flow and what job looks right for you. And when it doesn't work out, you can simply look for another job. You are not tied to stick with that job forever.